A few weeks ago, Sony had what I consider to be a banger of a PlayStation showcase. They also announced the most baffling handheld since the Game & Watch classics, the Project Q. It's been rumored for a while, and I believed these rumors full stop. It would make a lot of sense for the largest home console company in the world to want their players to be able to experience their graphically impressive games in a more portable form factor. Everyone wants that home console quality experience in a handheld. It's what made the Switch so popular. What doesn't make any sense is just how but ugly this thing is. If I saw this in a leak, I wouldn't have believed it. I wouldn't have even photoshopped something like this for one of my own YouTube thumbnails. Sony really wanted all of the features of a DualSense controller to translate to this. Except it doesn't have a touchpad, only a touchscreen. So already there goes that. But the most egregious thing about this and, and why everybody's been dunking on it so hard is because it's streaming only and not just from a server, from a PlayStation 5. So you already need a PlayStation 5 in order to use this thing. And you're gonna need a pretty decent home internet connection. Hey, I just made a video on, on how to get a better home internet connection. It's pretty relevant, you should, you should check that out. The reason this exists is because Sony greatly limits their remote play in order to force you into their ecosystem. Unlike Xbox remote play, you can't just use any old device to stream your games. You need one of their consoles. You also need a PlayStation 4 or 5 controller, but that's like fine, whatever. If, if you have a PlayStation 5 already, you already have a controller. And assuming that you have a phone in your pocket, you already have all of the capabilities of a Project Q right now. You just need to find a way to strap all this together. But we can take it one step further because I lied a little bit. There's also the PlayStation Edition Backbone 1 controller for iOS or Android. This thing is $100 and gives you what I consider to be an identical experience to what Sony announced out of their new cool product. And you can already get it right now. But like, how worth it is that experience anyway? Is it even worth the $100? This video is sponsored by Factor. Oh God, I guess I should get some food? Oh no. Is it cause I said, is it cause I said food? That was, it's for me. All right, okay, we can, we can both have it. Let's go, oh Jesus, all right, okay. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes in the microwave or seven minutes in the oven. So all you have to do is heat and enjoy. Need an extra boost to support your wellness goals this summer? Try Protein Plus meals with 30 grams of protein or more per serving. They got all different types of stuff from keto to calorie smart, vegan, veggie. They got something for everybody. It makes meal time super easy for when I like forget to eat. I can just run over to the fridge, grab it, put it in the oven and be done with it. And you can try it for yourself if you go to factor75.com or click the link in the description below and use code YAHUNGRY50 and get 50% off your first Factor box. You like it? Sim. Sim. Hey, stop, man. You like it? Sim. Excuse me. Excuse me, do you like it? The Project Q is gonna have an eight inch 1080p 60 frames per second LCD screen, which is pretty big. We're getting into like tablet territory here, but that's all that we know about the specs. I'm just assuming that it's gonna have pretty decent Wi-Fi because that's gonna be pulling most of the weight here. It's reminding me a lot of the Logitech G Cloud. Remember that thing? Logitech made like a streaming only device that had a pretty decent 1080p, 60 frames per second LCD screen. But that only had Wi-Fi 5 for some reason. Why not Wi-Fi 6 just go all the way? The G Cloud is currently $300. I think that is the bare minimum that Sony can get away with. But if I know them, they'll charge more than that, which would be baffling for a device that needs an internet connection in order to work at all. 
At least the G Cloud can play some games natively. The G Cloud was kind of billed as a Game Pass machine. Phil Spencer was pushing it really hard. Hideo Kojima seemed to really like it, but it was just way too expensive and way too niche to catch on. Now it does run on Android. So you can theoretically download the PlayStation Remote Play app and just let her rip. But you can't use the built-in controllers because Sony requires you to use a PlayStation 4 or 5 controller for some stupid fucking reason. There exists third-party apps which allow you to use any controller you want to remotely connect to your PlayStation 5. I tried Chiaki on a few devices. It's not very straightforward to use and I couldn't get it to connect at all. You need your PlayStation Network ID, but like the base 64 backend code? And to get that, you need like some JavaScript? I, I think I found it, but it didn't work. I don't know, it was, I just, it, it just it didn't work. But I mean, if you have a PlayStation 5 and a phone, you can try Chiaki for yourself for free and see if you get further than I did. I really just thought it'd be cool to have a Vita that could remote play a PlayStation 5 game. It would be a better Project Q because it could play PlayStation games natively. But that's fine. I have a PlayStation 5 controller. And if you have a PlayStation 5, I'm assuming you also have a PlayStation 5 controller. The first device I tried remote play on was actually my MacBook. I was upstairs in bed playing Destiny from my PlayStation 5 that was downstairs in my living room. And it ran awesome. It was pretty much seamless. I felt like I was playing on the device natively. The only real issue here is that every time I wanted to play, I had to go downstairs into the living room to do something whether it be re-entering the remote play code, manually turning the PlayStation on because it turned itself off for some stupid reason. There's always been something blocking it from waking up over the remote play app. When it worked, it worked really well, but I was using a whole ass MacBook, which has great Wi-Fi and video processing capabilities. Most of you people are gonna probably wanna use something like a phone. You can purchase like a clip to hold your phone to your controller for like 10 bucks on Amazon. Or if you got a 3D printer, you can just 3D print one. I'll link the files I used below. I just found a Google Pixel 3a plus case model and a DualSense clip and bridged them together. This clip holder thing works perfectly fine. And using it like this was actually pretty comfortable. It felt totally fine. This part's a little tight, so the thumbstick can't go down, but I fixed that in the Tinkercad model. I just don't feel like reprinting it. But the Remote Play app was not impressive at all. I'd like to chalk it up to this phone being a little bit older. I was able to use it outside my house, about 30 miles away, to connect to the PS5 in my house, but it was janky and unstable. The game worked. It just wasn't exactly fun. But I wanna give this old Google Pixel some credit because I've used this phone for Game Pass and remote play on Xbox before, and it was mostly fine. So even though it probably has not so great Wi-Fi, it worked just fine with the Xbox stuff. I do now have another Android phone though. Remember the Razer Edge? This thing is absolutely massive. This thing has Wi-Fi 6, so this is kind of the best you're gonna get. This thing's gonna have better specs than probably what we're gonna be seeing in the Project Q. So the Razer Edge is what I decided I wanted to use with the Backbone controller. They also make an iOS version, so if you have an iPhone, that'll work just as well. I just figured Android would be a little more versatile for me, and I wasn't wrong. It plugs into the bottom of the phone via USB-C or Lightning, depending on which version you get. It also has a headphone jack pass-through and a USB-C pass-through for charging that doesn't fit a Nintendo USB-C cable. So your USB-C cable may vary. The buttons are nice and clicky. Not as clicky as the Razer Kishi that came with the Edge, but still substantially clicky. It sandwiches the phone so it fits nice and snug. It's got this cool spring back piece that connects the two sides, a mechanism that I think Razer ripped off for the new version of the Kishi. 
It's definitely better than the old Kishi design. So I'm here for it. The Razer Edge is a little large. The screen is seven inches. So it was extremely tight getting it into the backbone controller. I kind of had to force it in there. And now that it's in, I'm, I'm not pulling it out. We're basically looking at something that is around the size of the Nintendo Switch. It is actually just a little too beefy to fit in a Nintendo Switch case. So now we've got a pretty nice setup for PlayStation Remote Play. I actually think this looks better than a Project Q. And this, again, is gonna have better specs than what we're gonna see in that, probably. But even with all of this, I was still really not impressed with the PlayStation Remote Play app. Even in my own house, I was experiencing a significant amount of lag. I mean, the game was playable, so I don't want to complain too much, but the lag was most prominent because of the audio skipping. I don't really think there's much excuse for this. It really made me concerned for the viability of the Project Q. Remember, they're building a whole device on the backbone of this functionality, and it currently doesn't work right on some of the best hardware that exists. I took this device with me on a recent trip and from 3,000 miles away tried to connect to my PlayStation 5 because wouldn't that make for a cool video? Uh, it, it turned itself off. It wouldn't connect at all. Or the hotel Wi-Fi was bad. I don't know what the problem was, but Game Pass streaming worked just fine on the hotel Wi-Fi and it worked just fine on the PlayStation version backbone controller. I was playing Forza Horizon just fine. There was some lag spikes, but less lag spikes than I had when playing remote play for my PS5 in my own damn house. This is all thanks to Microsoft's great cloud infrastructure and the fact that Game Pass works with whatever controller you've got. Although I did find myself pressing the wrong X button at least once. Which brings up a good point. I guess this setup would be great if you're a big fan of PlayStation emulation because you can use the Backbone controller to give yourself the right button legends for your other PlayStation games, like PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, PlayStation Portable, Vita, if you're into all that. While I was in Vegas, I also attempted Xbox Remote Play and uh, that didn't work either because I didn't have that set up correctly. I think I was just using the wrong app. I still had the beta app on here. But comparing the two from inside my own house was still very interesting. I really don't understand what it is about PlayStation that gives me these weird lag spikes. Audio cracks all weird and frames drop hard when things happen on screen. I really don't get it. Xbox, on the other hand, seems pretty smooth. No complaints here. I'll also note that Xbox's remote play just works. You log in, pick your console, and that's it. PlayStation requires a code and And also, an official controller. Note that I'm playing my Xbox remote play with a PlayStation branded controller. The Backbone controller does come in a bunch of different versions. There is a version that has the Xbox A, B, X, Y buttons in, in the right place. And I do hear that that also works with PlayStation remote play. But besides Backbone, there are a lot of other different types of controller grip Joy-Con looking things for Android and for iPhone. We can't forget about the Razer Kishi. I love the version two that this Razer Blade came with. I was a big fan of the clickiness of this. The version one is also pretty good and that's on sale for just $60 right now, but it might still be worth it to spend the $100 and get the PlayStation edition just so you can use it with remote play because that's the only attachable controller PlayStation will allow you to use with remote play and it will still work with everything else you'd want to use it with like emulators and other Android games and stuff. From what we know about the Project Q so far, it's only going to be good for just the one thing and that's remote play. And if for some reason your PlayStation is off, maybe your mom was vacuuming and she hit the surge protector, maybe it just turned itself off for some stupid reason, maybe there's just a connection issue. For whatever reason, if it can't connect to your home PlayStation 5, you just have a useless black screen. 
but I do have a slight glimmer of hope, a very, very slight glimmer of hope for the Project Q. They officially are only saying that it works with remote play right now, but what if they get it to work with PlayStation Plus streaming? Maybe they're waiting on PlayStation Plus streaming to get to a better place. Maybe they're waiting for a mobile app for PlayStation Plus streaming to release and, and, and that to like come out of the weird beta that it's in right now. That way, the Project Q can connect to a server and not just your home Wi-Fi. And that way, your PS5 can be off and you won't need a PS5 at all. PS Plus streaming currently only works on a PC. And you know what? It's actually not bad. There's a lot of jank in the setup process. It kept thinking it was a web browser at first. And there's some weird navigation stuff. And I had some cloud save issues. But you know what? It works with alternative controllers after this pretty heavy disclaimer. But it works actually pretty great. I got no lag at all. I felt pretty much like I was playing on the device. I'm using the ROG Ally, which is essentially a Windows PC with baked in X input controllers. And I'm glad it works like this because I did not want to have to connect my PS5 controller all jankily. So why doesn't remote play work this good? Why does remote play cut out and drop frames where PlayStation Plus streaming will just like lower the resolution and, and keep a consistent frame rate and, and steady gameplay. Why is it like that? It shouldn't come as too much of a surprise to me because PlayStation streaming uses Microsoft Azure as like the infrastructure. So it uses the same cloud service that Microsoft uses for Game Pass streaming. PlayStation's got a lot of work to do before they release this Project Q. I think they're going to have to completely overhaul remote play if they want this thing to be successful at all. But I do have a theory. I think that they're going to delay this thing. And I think they're going to try really hard to make sure that PlayStation Plus streaming gets onto this thing because that will add so much more value. I'm just once again so baffled by Sony's decisions here. Why would they announce this thing with only one of its features? And if they end up not putting PlayStation Plus streaming on this thing, why does this thing exist at all? I'm gonna be getting the Project Q just to make a video on it, but I will be heavily comparing it to all of the other devices that are out there that could already do exactly what the Project Q does. And it's already not looking too good for the Project Q when a $100 add-on to the phone you already have can already do everything that the Project Q can do and probably even be more comfortable and just all around better. I can't believe I'm gonna say this, but why don't you just hack a Vita? So what do you guys think about Project Q and PlayStation Plus streaming and PlayStation Remote Play and all that stuff? Have you tried it? Have you had a better experience than I've had? Have you, I know a lot of you are gonna talk about how much of a great time and how easy it is to set up all of these third-party apps. It's good for you, that's great. You can leave it in the comments below. You can add me on Twitter and any and all of this other social media garbage. Hey, we stream on Twitch all of the time, usually at night. That's where some of these clips came from. And some of the Twitch chat helped me with this video. You should go over there and help me with more videos. Thank you, Factor, for helping sponsor this video. And of course, the most important thing that you can do to support this channel is just subscribe right here. Share this video with a friend. A friend who has a PlayStation 5 and maybe an Android phone and wants some options. Thank you very much. Have yourself a very good week. I mean, it works on iPhone too. Never mind. Forget it. We're done.